everybody. Welcome to the Faint Divinities. We are a channel dedicated to running, playing, and talking about Daggerheart, which is the new tabletop RPG from Critical Role's publishing house, Darrington Press, which is currently in final stages of development uh, and set to release in 2025. Um, but if you are out there and you're wondering how we can all talk about it if it's not out yet, it's because we and you have actually access to play Daggerheart if you should so choose um, because it's all available in version 1.5 you can go to daggerheart.com to find out more or you could just stick around this channel I talk about it and it only basically so um, uh, but that's it Today, though, is a very special episode, and everybody that follows me wherever we are, Insta and X and Threads and Discord, you've heard me say that very special episode like 12,000 times, um, because today I have, uh, if you will remember from my community, if you're part of my community and you remember, I mentioned a little while ago that I was going to be GMing Daggerheart at Gen Con 2024 as a member of the Double Exposure Envoy program. Uh, and Gen Con, of course, wrapped, I don't know if you guys know this at this point, if you've put it together, but it's been three weeks. So Gen Con, it's been three weeks since we left and everything. Uh, and... As part of that, the people here for this very special episode are six of the 12, including me. So 50% of the group that was in the room with the Darrington Press team working al alongside them as members of the Envoy program, the Envoy program, sorry, um, running Daggerheart. You're all GMs. <laughs> True. I'm not lying. Yeah, we are. Yeah, we are. That's yeah, we are. Yeah, yeah. So, so very don't remind me of how I still have not unpacked. Don't remind me of how I still don't have a voice. <laughs> Y'all. Yeah. Get I, it together. <laughs> Why I don't have makeup on? I couldn't find it. <laughs> <laughs> That was be my whole Gen Con, by the way. Actually, no, because I'm the kind of person I get to the hotel room first and I unpack into stuff, being very respectful, mm -hmm. leaving enough drawers for the other people. But yeah, like, um, so I got home and I immediately unpacked my big suitcase, but I hid the small one in the closet to not think about it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, uh, Sounds about right. Yeah. Also, hi, everybody in chat. We have Kayla, good time zone. Oh, there's Anastasia in. We've got so many of our friends. Duckburg, you're there as well. Um, I know that Chris is in so good to see you Ooh, somebody robot red i don't even know robot red but hi i expect that you might be a friend of tom's <laughs> like, <so. laughs> all right so again we are some of the gms that supported daggerheart at gen con and i figured that we would go around and do just very brief introductions anything you want to say it can be as simple as hi i'm rachel and i love tabletop rpg um but i'll i'll do it in the order that we have so oh. starting with me uh, obviously, if you're here, then you probably know that this is my channel. I am Rachel of the Faint Divinities. We've already said the spiel about Daggerheart. Moving on. Um, next, we have Chris. Hi, guys. Uh, my name's Chris. I'm based in, uh, in the UK from Scotland. So if you can't understand me, that's why. Um, I've been playing RPGs uh, since basically the end of COVID. Uh, came out of COVID, found D&D, and fell into it off a cliff. Um, I was one of the first four people to debut Daggerheart in public at Gen Con 23. Yeah, that's we're going to talk about that a little bit, too, because that's super exciting. Guys, this wasn't the first year they did Daggerheart. It's just the first year they weren't super secret about it. And we have we have GMs in this group who were there. I know, Kayla, it's so cool. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much, Chris. And it's so good to have you. Thank you. I know it's like later in your day. Um, and then we have Jan. Jan, you are on mute. That happens. Don't worry about it. It It's totally fine. Listen, that's why I'm here to moderate and let you know. Okay, I'm just going back to this. Okay, <laughs> wonderful. You did it, yes. <laughs> I tried to do like a push to talk sort of thing and I, apparently not, yeah, not going to work for me. Um, yeah, all good. <laughs> Go ahead. So I did not prepare nothing. So hi, I'm Jan. Um, 
I've been a part, I would say, of the geek community for pretty much my entire life. I got into um, tabletop RPGs from my dad. Um, he's the one that kind of got me into it. And um, I, I just kind of just grew up in that kind of community. So um, I just decided to start doing the same thing that they do and start volunteering because, you know, as you grow older, it's you got to kind of step up, I guess. I love it. I think that that's true. Absolutely. You do have to step up. I think that's probably a common theme amongst all of us is that if you're a GM for tabletop, you probably were the friend that's used to stepping up uh, because your friend group wants to play and you're like, I, I will make that happen for my nerd passion. Yes, absolutely. So <laughs> thank, thank you yeah. so much, Jan. All right. And then we have Tom today. Hello everyone, I'm Tom or Tealy, feel free to call me whatever. Uh, I've been the Forever DM for my friend group since about a decade now. Uh, I am a certified Dice Goblin, been into all kinds of tabletops since I've been, you know, in the nerddom since literally forever. Um, and yeah, now I am happy to be here to talk about Daggerheart. Like Chris, I was also part of the 2023 crew that did Daggerheart as well. So, uh, yeah, lots of dagger hearts. Lots of daggers and hearts. Yeah, respectively. Like, oh, my cat is being crazy. All right. And then we have Anastasia. Good to see all of you. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Anastasia Roland on TikTok and Instagram. I mostly make book talk content, but have kind of started going into TTRPGs because, oh, TTRPGs have been part of my life for the decade you know i started with D, D, like all of us do and then like recently as we started getting into more like indie stuff started going into that and like uh then obviously dagger heart came out and that's just been like my heart and soul for the past <laughs> little bit uh this was actually my first time gming live was at gen con 2024 i have not i know i know i have not been the forever gm i've been the forever player who wants to gm and then luckily like my partner is in the space so that kind of helped me get started like I wasn't on my own kind of thing but yeah so I've only been GMing for the better part of like a year now and so it was super exciting um and if anybody wants to catch me as a player I'm on the Dice Cream Sandwich Twitch channel Sundays at 11 a.m. That is so I I mean absolutely everybody Anastasia if you are not following her on places please do that last I don't know if it was the last one but your book reviews by slapping books was <laughs> I had to, I, I immediately like <laughs> you. I was like, this is incredible. Yeah, so. Um, well, like so many people do reviews and you have to find a way to like do it new and make it interesting. So oh, thank you. It got me immediately. Even if I wasn't your friend, I would have liked it. <laughs> like, like, so, yeah. No, And also like, uh, wow, that's so incredible that this was your first foray into, never would have guessed. Wow, you did it. I don't thank you thank you yeah I GM like home games and stuff like that it's just like my first foray like publicly so thank you that means a lot a huge talk like, about trial by fire trial by yeah, fire. yeah 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 you know you gotta you gotta jump in you both know? feet oh yeah yeah this is not a toe dipped in this situation just straight into yeah okay perfect so. that was me last year when I was doing candela <gasps> that's right nice yeah, yeah all right thank you so much and then we have Daniel Hi folks, um, I am Daniel. I run uh, Wyvern's Nest uh, on a lot of the socials. Uh, a lot of that's a lot newer, kind of stemmed from Gen Con this year. Uh, but I have been a game master in a bunch of different systems and I've been playing a bunch of dis different systems for uh, probably around 20 years now, um, either playing or running. And so I've got just a bunch of different experience um, with different tables and different different systems different environments and uh i have just absolutely fallen head over heels for dagger heart uh, i was also part of the crew that uh that debuted that at gen con last year uh and it, it's just been an absolute honor to do so yeah, that's so wonderful. I know that, um, you know, I don't want to spoil anything of for like content that maybe Darrington Press might release later. But I know that, you know, it's no secret that they were doing some interviews and stuff. And I heard some some people talking about interviews, Daniel. I was, you know, there for you. It was lovely to hear and stuff. So, so good. 
But yeah, so again, guys, this is not all of us. I don't I I don't want to take away from the people that were not here. Most of what I have here are either people who had reached out to me specifically when I was I had already had it kind of mulling in my brain to do this or people who I was in the room with just all the time. <laughs> so some of you, y'all were like right next to me and we were competitively screaming uh, at our respective <laughs> yeah. tables. You know, guys, it, I know we, we were, I've talked about this a little bit. Um, you know, I felt very privileged when you like, my partner also was GMing, but he was GMing for the Roll a Crit group. So he was in the main hall, right? Those rows of tables. So when I walk into our little conference room, I was like, wow, really fancy over here. Um, but it's still incredibly loud <laughs> because six GMs running tables, for six players each crazy so all right okay but that's our group um thank you guys all so much for for showing up today um we've kind of oh small disclaimer before we go any further so for anybody who is in chat or anybody who sees this on youtube after i do want to note that none of us officially work for darrington press okay so if you we if we were there as part of the envoy program specifically we were working alongside darrington press and what delightful people they have um we were also working alongside the 12 candela gm game masters um uh so but we do not work for represent our personal opinions are our own if you have questions about darrington press we can give you opinions only but they are our personal opinions and really Go right to the source, guys. I don't know if you know this. Darrington Press has a Discord where their team is in there and they talk to the, the group pretty frequently. Um, so join that. That's my little plug for the Darrington Press Discord because it's great. And it's where I met a lot of you guys, actually. So um, <laughs> Hitman says the best opinions. And I agree. We do have fantastic opinions. Yeah. So <laughs> all right. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, also, just note, it's Thursday! <gasps> That's such an exciting yeah. yeah, such an exciting day in the community. I don't think I've ever done a Thursday stream because I'm like, well, I'm not. I'm busy Thursday night. So Thursday morning. Mm. Thursday morning. I even have a note in my calendar on my phone to notify me whenever it starts. I've had it for like years. And my dad only just now found out about it like maybe a couple of months ago when I had – because I have – I go to a board game night like right before that. And it yeah. popped up like an hour before. And he's like, do you have an alert for Critical Role? And I'm like – yeah, I do. Yeah, what am I, a loser? <laughs> like, like, of course we are. Adorable. Oh, that is so, yeah. Um, also, I like to hear that you're a person that has alarms that span or reminders that span years, because me too. I still have to go check on my neighbor's cat, Gus, apparently, um, a thing that I did like seven years ago. But I have to do it April 12th every year, so like, <laughs> I moved. I don't live there anymore. Uh, but anyway, uh, so I got to delete that. Anyway. Um, all right. Well, I really like that we started out by giving people's background in tabletop a lot, I think, um, which was fantastic. What a great way to like introduce the group. Um, but I would like for those of you who didn't really dive into how you got started with Daggerheart specifically, because um, just show of hands real quick. Did we all start in Dungeons and Dragons? Yes. I think I started in Pathfinder, actually. Dang. Jim, just hey, cool. She's just so cool, you guys. Okay, fantastic. I love that. Because, you know, we know that Dagger... Oh, sorry. I My vernacular now, I don't even say Dungeons & Dragons anymore. Uh, by the way, if I ever say DM, it is straight up Dagger Master. I say GM or <laughs> Dagger Master if you're nasty is my little thing on this channel. Um, anyway, so... A lot of people get start in this started in this community through Dungeons and Dragons. It's the gateway, right? A lot of people don't even know that other stuff exists if you're outside of the community. And my joke is that you come in and then you're like, you guys are are doing stuff with Cthulhu monsters and you're finding paths and you're, you know, uh, honey heisting as bears. What's happening in here, you know? Um, but I do think that one... 
I really feel very passionate about uh, competition in the space and creating a better world for all of tabletop RPG in the future. I love Dungeons and Dragons. Absolutely, I do. It's where I got started. It was my first home in the space. But I'm so excited about some of these emerging systems. You know, we have, um, I think, DC20, Daggerheart, we've talked about, the Cosmere RPG, the Brandon Sanderson's. Go ahead. If you have some time, I'm go so ahead. No, I'm just so excited. I want to do like a whole video on it. But like, I cannot wait. I It is mm, it is the best story. If you guys haven't read Brandon Sanderson, you have to. You absolutely have to. It's a masterpiece of literature. And I am so excited to play it. That's all. I just, ugh. Yeah. You I had a go of the game at, at Gen Con. We can maybe talk a bit about that later. So it's a, it's a fantastic game. Oh, you did? <gasps> Yeah. Oh, oh. Of course, I love it when nerds all get together in a same group again. <laughs> I've missed you all so much. Yeah, you can't talk See, about the I'm... Cosmere most places. Go ahead, Daniel. Um. Well, I'm so, and it's it's funny because I'm coming at it from the other angle. I have never read any Sanderson. Uh, I believe my dad actually gave me a book when I or an audio book when I was younger, and I never got around to to reading or listening to it. Um. But I was reading through the RPG, the post that they have on Kickstarter. And I am so fascinated by the design of the system because it, it there really is a, a very unique aspect to it. So I backed it whole whole kit, and um, uh, I'm I'm gonna have to start reading now if I'm gonna have a hope of finishing before it releases. Okay, audiobook it, audiobook it. I've read it four times now because the fifth book is also coming out in December, which is okay. like so good time to get started. Uh, I do audiobook from my library two and a half times speed, so it's like. Still long, like you see, <laughs> you see fifty five hours, and you're like, "What am I getting into per book?" Uh, but it's much more manageable that way, and it's uh, the they use the same uh, voice actors all the time for oh it. God. It's so good. It's so good. <sighs> yeah. No. Yeah. Awesome. That is. I. So uh, this is all this energy. This is what I'm seeing in the space right now. Everybody's of course excited about Dungeons and Dragons. We will always be excited. You can't put those. Yeah. Well. Yeah. We can't put. Uh, but you know, like five five point five is coming. You guys know. <laughs> like okay. Uh, but we're very excited about D and D twenty twenty four. It's and. Gen Con was all about the 50th anniversary. Gen Con, of course, created originally by Gary Gygax, the co-creator of Dungeons & Dragons. Huge. But these new systems, I'm so excited about, and I'm so excited about the people that are um, just jumping headfirst into that. And Daggerheart is one of those systems. Daggerheart is one of those alternatives. So for you guys, how did you, some of you, <laughs> clearly have been in the know. I knew that Daggerheart was happening, but I wasn't in yet. But some of you knew and GM'd last year. Let's start with you guys that GM'd Daggerheart last year because we have three. Um, what? How did y'all first hear about Daggerheart and then what was the inroads to getting it to G GM that at Gen Con in its first year where I think you were having to sign like NDAs and stuff, right? Yeah. What did that look like? And are you released from those NDAs at this point? Are you okay to talk about that kind of stuff um, from a higher level? Uh, the high level. There's okay. still stuff that we are, we are not released from. But. Fantastic. If it obviously do not say anything that you cannot say, but I guess you can certainly say how you initially heard about Daggerheart, got into Daggerheart. So for me, um, I had already been part of the Envoy program at that time for for a while, um, and I had been involved in uh, a couple of other conventions and and had even GM'd for uh, GM'd um, Dungeons and Dragons actually uh, for Envoy before, but. Um, I, I was lo just looking for a slot at Gen Con uh, for my first year of attendance uh, to, to run something. And they were like, hey, uh, we we just just added Darrington Press into our roster for companies that we have a partnership with. Do you have do you have any interest in that? And, and knowing that they were tied to Critical Role, I was like, I, ha I have to try. I have I, I don't even care what I'm running, because at that point we didn't know um, it was they, I believe Vinny called it a super secret project. Um, but he's, you know, yeah, it just kind of was like, it, whatever it is, it's going to be good. And so I, I jumped on the train there and I, 
I, I don't think it's underscoring it, calling it life changing. <laughs> for me at least that's incredible so your first foray into it really was gen con like you found Mm -hmm. out about it through like back road whisper chris is it similar for you yeah very much so i think for me um i was a late addition to the gen con team Uh, you know um that that gen con was the first time it was played in public outside of down to press so you know i think for all of us it was, uh, you know, it was massive. It was nerve wracking. So we were presenting this world work to the world for the very first time. Um, and it was incredible. Yeah, no, I, I, I completely agree. And I think that I, like a lot of us, right. I was very, I had my very strong suspicions. A lot of my friends know that I was talking about it a lot long before I ever heard that Daggerheart was actually the name of the thing. I was confident that the critical role and again, publishing house Darrington Press Groups were going to be coming out with a system of their own. We had heard whisperings about that for a long time. And then also we know, and Dungeons and Dragons, Wizards of the Coast addressed this this year at Gen Con, the open gaming license fiasco, um, We knew that a lot of people realized very suddenly that if you want to protect your market space, then you need to at least consider. So I'm not saying that's where that's going, obviously, but I suspect it. And the first thing I saw of it was Bob, the world builder, I think, uh, on YouTube, who did. He might have been at one of y'all's tables. I don't know. But he was uh, he was uh, he went to play at Gen Con 2023 and it was such good information so um tom what about you how did you get into daggerheart oh uh, yeah so i had actually uh again was signing up for gen con stuff pretty late i had already been to gen con for a couple of years got in with the envoy program um but at the point i was signing up i'd recently watched some videos about some upcoming stuff to look out for at gen con and they're like oh the darrington press is going to be there and doing some stuff so i'm like oh well maybe we'll see if they have anything so Signing up for Envoy, they had the Darrington Press thing there uh, during the video call interview for placements. And I was like, hey, I'll help out. And they gave me the option of helping to run either Candela or uh, Daggerheart. Obviously, I chose Daggerheart and have not looked back. Yeah. And Jan, you chose Candela. Actually, I was one of the like last minute people for Candela. I got so extremely lucky um that year because i it was like i said it was my first time volunteering with double exposure i was doing it because you know there were other people part of my family friend group that does it so i was like okay yeah i'll start doing it was expecting probably to run like a board game sort of thing and then i saw a darrington press and i'm like yo 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 i'll do it i don't care what it is i'll do it and <laughs> like it was I, I had like all midnight shifts and on I believe it was Saturday the entire day. And I'm like, I got to work with Darrington Press. I'm here for it. And I made a friend, I can't remember their name, but um since it was my first time also at Gen Con, they like, you know, showed me some of the really cool things and they um they also stuck me into their dagger heart game on Sunday morning. So I had a chance to get a get like that early look without actually having gotten to play it that's incredible and and like i know that that with because again i i will speak on the behalf of some people because i know that when you sign an nda you're not always sure what you can say what you can't say i was not a part of it so i am totally confident saying the things that i know which was that last year wasn't a module at all um there it was it was very early stages and what you guys were doing is actually still i in my understanding in an evolved state in the current manuscript for 1.5 on daggerheart.com which is the uh i don't want to call it build your own adventure um but basically build your own adventure of what are y'all most interested in is it save the queen or is it rescue the cat from the tree i don't know what it was exactly guys but it was all very variable focused in on that collaborative storytelling aspects right is that true yeah yeah Yeah, um this was uh, this was just my favorite thing it was it was so so cool um i mean you know we went through uh teaching the system allowing an entire party of of six people to build their characters from scratch 
and then did a world building session where, yeah, we followed this this like rough outline that they had given us. And uh, there were like a set of answers for each slot. And so each party would go in and select the answers they wanted. And then you had to kind of world build that on the spot and say, OK, what world does this fit into? Uh, how how is this quest going to roughly go? And then it was the GM's responsibility there to, uh, you know, to to flesh that out and to, to you know to give the the world life um but that i think that goes to one of the things that's really cool about dagger heart overall which is that it puts so much agency back on the players mm -hmm. because it is important for them to participate not only in the world building but also in the you know what are the challenges that you are facing as you are dealing with this this quest yeah. um and that that last year really highlighted mm -hmm. that aspect um incredibly well it was it was so cool it was a lot in four hours but it was amazing that's so yeah. cool i definitely want to dive into that a little bit more um but anastasia you and i i think because we were not at the 2023 gen con running it so we're actually the newbies of the group isn't that fun um so like uh <laughs> i've been into dagger heart since i really because I didn't want to get involved while well, I would have gotten involved, but I didn't know how to get involved before the open beta started. So, but I'm interested to hear from your perspective because we're again on this side of the of the world. How did you get involved in Daggerheart? Okay. Uh uh, yeah, I started with the open beta. Like, my partner and I bonded over Critical Role. Like, our first date, I think we ended up talking about Critical Role for, like, three hours. Because that was just, like, the most common thing that we had, right? Uh, so then the open beta came out and we wanted to play it together. So we both signed up. And then uh, this was kind of my first year of, like, it's kind of my first year really going to cons. Like, last year I did San Diego Comic Con. But that was the only one that I had done. So this year I did, like, ECC. We did San Diego again. We're doing this. We're doing PAX U. And I was like, okay, I need to start being able to do this without paying for everything. So how do I do that? Because my partner goes and he does panels. So he gets badges for himself and his players. Sometimes I get to go as a plus one. But often I have to pay my own way for everything. Uh, but... Literally, they had uh, Critical Role had put out a survey on their Instagram and was like, do you want to play games for us? Fill out this form. And I no way. No way. Because as I said, I had never GM'd like publicly before. But my partner was like, just do it. Who cares? Like it doesn't if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. So yeah, filled out the survey uh, and then got an email like two months later from Alex, who is absolutely lovely, being like, hey, we want to work with you. Do you still want to do this? I was like, <laughs> yes please and then it just kind of like happened and so i guess like from my experiences for all the gms out there who are just starting or want to get into it just it really is like a just try because you never know what will happen and now like we're hoping to do it again at pax you i don't know again with envoy or not but like my partner might be doing a dagger heart panel and i might be going with that so like it just starts and then you just get more into it yeah, that's absolutely like the uh, tabletop RPG is like the closet door that you're like, oh, what's in here? And then you like peek open and everything falls out on you and you either are like, nope, or you're like, oh my God, I love this. This is and the then it your whole life and everybody's like, what do you do with your life? I'm like, nothing. I play TTRPGs three times a week yeah. with my friends online at home. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. When people are like, what are your hobbies? I say hobby, like, because how do you have multiple? I don't know. The number of books that you read, wild to me, although I think tabletop RPG, a common thread is that if you're involved, you probably are a lover of stories. Because that's yeah. what we're doing. Yeah, you know? and it does, it does inform so much of storytelling of like, people always ask me, they're like, how do you come up with this on the spot? And I'm like, honestly, I don't. I don't want to say I don't because I do. It still comes from my brain, but I have read 80 books this year and on some level that's been absorbed and then it just comes out in these moments. And sometimes I don't even know where it's going to go till it goes, you know? The worst is so... Oh, go ahead, go it's ahead. Just group... It's just group hallucination time. Absolutely it is. Yes, 100%, which is the collaborative nature, and it's why I like Daggerheart so much. One of our people in chat actually had high rooks. Um, so Kayla in chat, who was really excited about the Brandon Sanderson, she's my best friend. She is a writer and a lover of stories, and she is saying that right now. I will read her comment that uh, she definitely didn't know I was starting to talk as this was happening, but she says, you know how to make a good storyline because you get to read so many great ones. 
And that's what it is. You can't, I'm sure that there are people out there who are just inspired by the muses and a story just develops in their burning heart despite never having engaged with a good story. But I know tons of people who try to get into writing or they try to get into GMing or they, without having immersed themselves in stories. It doesn't have to be any specific rubric, but you have to be a lover of stories first because that is foundational to your being a storyteller. Um, so when I found out that you read that many books, first I was like, what? But then I was like, makes sense, you know? <laughs> like, it's, yeah. That's exciting. just part of life. <laughs> just part of life. Yeah. So um, also worst thing that ever happened to me. Just kidding, Kayla. It's not the worst thing. But me and my best friend who I got into tabletop this year, we're in a book club together um, on Lady Danger's stream. For any of you who know Lady Danger, I co-host a book club with her. And um, and the problem now is that my GM storylines very often are fed by the books that we're reading. And now she knows it all. <laughs> it's like no so <laughs> can't secrets anymore <laughs> ruined <laughs> yeah, it's 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 always like when uh the players are like oh this storyline seems suspiciously familiar and then you're just like uh yeah that's that's it's the, my favorite anime or whatever <laughs> yeah don't look too closely at at season six episode three of doctor who you know what i'm saying like, <laughs> like no, no. So, yeah incredible um Okay, that's so good. I, I love that because, again, Daggerheart is, it's, guys, it's in its infancy. Not even. It's it's still incubating right now, you know? So mm -hmm. I, and that's one of my kind of call to actions here on this channel is telling people that, hey, guys, I really feel that this could be one of the, it could be and will for some of us be um, a great big passion in the tabletop space. Critical Role is huge. Darrington Press is an incredible group. All of the stuff that they put forth is of such high quality. They are going to make a system that is incredible and it's going to be accessible to a lot of people because we have a built-in community. If you want to be that person who shows up on day one to your friend group never having done anything with Tabletop RPG before and you could just GM a story, get in now. Get in while it's still incubating and then you will emerge, I don't know, a, a peacock's got a fly situation, you know? So, like. It's also a system, and I was telling players this at uh, Gen Con, that it is probably the best written system for starting to learn how to GM because even in the downloadable module, it tells you, like, there is more chapters about actually GMing the game and how to run an effective, safe, inclusive game than there are about, like, actually the rules. There's an entire chapter on, like, how to run an adventure and how to be a good GM. So I think it's a really good space that has it written out for you, as opposed to Dungeons & Dragons, where, and this is where I go, like, eh, about Dungeons & Dragons. I started playing it. I loved playing it. But even the pre-written modules, it doesn't teach you how to connect a story. It's like, here's a module with 12 chapters. Here's what happens at 12 chapters, but you have to figure it out. And Mm -hmm. Darrington doesn't do that. Like it's, I don't know. I think it's very well laid out. Yeah, I mean, an it, example. Of, oh, would, go Chris, go Chris. Yeah. There's two things I would say on that. Firstly, the quality of the layout of the physical sheets and everything is absolutely outstanding. Um, another piece, I think, from the narrative point of view, what I really, one of the things I really enjoy about that, uh, from a storytelling point of view, as opposed to a pass fail set of options for a given role, you actually have four. Right, not including critical, you've got success and failure with hope and with fear, and that gives you, I think, gives you so much more narrative freedom. Um, and I, that's something that I love, as also as a lover of stories, as you can see by the bookcases behind me. So, like, that's just something that I think that this system brings that others just don't is that level of freedom. And it teaches you, if I could just w add one more thing, it teaches you for other systems how to make a failure interesting. Because if you fail, but you fail with hope, you still have to find something that happens for your players. Or if you succeed, but you succeed with fear, you as a GM have to figure out, okay, how do I make this interesting? How do I add to the tension? And I think it teaches you in sessions like Pathfinder or D&D or whatever it might be that just has that pass fail of how to make it more interesting. So it's more universal. 
Yeah, and I, I I could talk about that that gambit of success and failure through duality dice. I, I could talk about that for hours. Um, but it's it is just incredible because you know I, there was a, a video. Yeah, <laughs> had some <laughs> duality dice there. Um, it, it is incredible um, how much it clicks for people that hey, just because I failed, just because I didn't get that immediate success and the the you know events that follow that that doesn't mean that nothing happens that doesn't mean that the story is stalled you know if it's a story if it's a narrative piece then things can flow from that thing you know failure is oftentimes just as interesting if not more there was a video that uh, i think it was uh, brennan lee mulligan and actually sam reich uh, had put this yeah. out the other day um you know where where uh, Sam was talking about, you know, that failure is often the more interesting option. It does not have to stall a story. And I think that that's, that's something that I see a lot of GMs really struggle with is they think that, oh, I have to, I have to give them a role and they can't move forward until they, they succeed on this role. The example, and that's not the case. To jump in here, because this yeah. is the one that I give mm. to everyone. You've heard this a thousand times in my community. I think that certain systems hide the story behind the mechanics. It puts mechanics first and story second. As an example, in Dungeons and Dragons, we have all walked into a room and the GM says, roll a perception check. And mm -hmm. number one, how silly is it that six people are rolling perception? Inevitably, one year usually succeeds which is great because that's what you sure. need to happen but have we ever been at those tables where everyone fails you've played Baldur's Gate 3 you know what it sounds like and you know how <laughs> disappointed you are when you're like so that's it I can't look harder anything I I love I had never even fathomed of a system that said stop doing that you don't have to do that let first of all put the story and the player experience first Keep it right there in the spotlight. Let the mechanics support that instead. And you, so you're not told to hide stuff from your players. Now, if it branches, if the story branches, that's okay. And I do want to take this opportunity for the people who, because we assume it's an echo chamber, right? We assume everybody knows what Daggerheart is and how it works. There could be people that are tuning in, especially on YouTube later, that don't know how this system works. In a lot of tabletop RPG, especially of days of old, it was a D20, a 20-sided die. You roll it to determine, oh, I rolled a natural 20. Oh, I always kiss my nat 20s, just FYI, so I must do that. Sorry, guys. Sorry for those of you on stream for that intimate moment. But natural 20, uh, love it. But it, you then determine, based on how well you rolled, if you succeed at what you're trying to accomplish. This system has, instead duality dice. They are two D12s, 12-sided die, uh, and they should look different. For, for example, you see that I have a white one and a black one, one representing hope and one representing fear. Either one could suffice, but in this case, I'm choosing my white as my hope, fear, as my hope die and my black as my fear die. You roll those and add those together um, to give you the total of if you succeed. But then whichever you roll higher on, in this case, my hope die was higher. I rolled a five on my hope die. Oh, everybody want to hold up your hope dies? If you have them, you don't have to if you don't. Um, but at, oh, it's so cute. Listen, I'll, I'll pause for this moment. That's adorable. Everybody's got some dice. It's okay. It's okay. Don't do you do no pressure. There we go. We did it. <laughs> so, um, if, you ha if you roll higher on your hope, it doesn't matter. You might succeed the check or fail the check, but the the which die rolls higher determines did you succeed with hope or did you succeed with fear? Did you fail with hope or did you fail with fear? Which again is kind of like the critical failure in this system if I would put assign something to it. Um, and like Chris was saying, that is actually becoming a more popular mechanic and some of that is to focus storytelling first is having something like a fate die i think the cosmere uses like a fate die mechanic um, lots of systems are using those kinds of things because they want there to be guidance of how the world reacts you sure you succeeded that's fine what's interesting that's happening in the world 
this system bootstraps the storytelling and the world changing around you and it positions we the gms as the arbiter of fate which sick love it love it love being in control of the fear great so anyway um but yeah that's that's so that's such a good like kind of piece to add into that um we've We've kind of dipped into this a little bit. Um, so I think, Jan, it's been a little bit since I've heard from you. Can you start us off with this next little topic, which is, and you can criticize it if you want. I want this to be a fair and level playing field. Um, it is still being developed. So if we have criticisms, now is the time to talk about those as well. But I'm here. I love the system. So tell me, are, are there things that you want to talk about that you love or hate about the system? What do you really love or what would you like to see changed, you know? Some of my favorite things that I do love about the system is that whenever like a player wants to do something, you know, they look over at me. They're like, OK, like, what do I roll? Like they're expecting that because that's what they're used to. And I'm like, OK. How do you do that? How Describe how you want to do that. And then they're like, okay. And then like something like happens where it's a failure or like they take damage. I'm like, all right, describe how you take that damage. And they're like, wait, what? I'm describing this? Isn't that supposed to be what you do? I'm like, nope, you get to do that. <laughs> um, but one of the challenges I would say is that it does create a lot of uh, like improv sort of thing. And if you're not used to a lot of that improv kind of snapback, there's that s moment where they're like, oh, I didn't prepare for this. I don't know what I what to do. And it, there's that kind of like patience learning curve in a way. Um, but I think that it ultimately is good, in my opinion, because it allows for some really fun interactions. Yeah, well, and I think that the, um, the end goal of tabletop RPG, in my personal opinion, is getting as close back to when you were a kid playing Im imagination games with your friends. Um, and sometimes when you're playing a game that focuses the storyline only on the GM, it just becomes you doing a one-man show um, and everybody else just like sits there and listens. And sometimes the story is very good and they're okay to do that, right? Mm -hmm. But the goal is that other people are affecting their story. They're the player characters. It's, it's as GMs, we've probably all had those tables sometimes where getting the PCs in is a little bit harder. Again, this system like encourages that. So that's beautiful, Jan. Thank you so much. Anybody else? This is not an initiative-based system. Jump in, Daggerheart. <laughs> with the, the the action tracker is in play, guys. Jump in when you want. You know. Um. I, so there was a there was a a video that I had seen. It was an interview, actually, or a podcast uh, of some sort between uh, Deborah and Wool, uh, who was Karen Page and Daredevil and um uh, john bernthal uh and it uh she was she she looks at him and they they were they were talking about you know uh john had wanted to do um you know he, he had expressed some interest in in some kind of ttrpg i think it was dungeons and dragons and she looks at him and she goes do you do you want to play dungeons and dragons and he's he's like sure and and she goes do you want to do you want to do it right now and they had this exchange that was and it was masterful she just it was it was one of the most impressive things I've ever seen. But she she basically says, you know, she she starts describing a scenario and then asks him what he would do. Doesn't ask, doesn't throw mechanics in his face, doesn't explain how how the world works, doesn't give him rules. She asks him what he's going to do. And it's talking about she's talking about hunting. And so he gives a response and then she demonstrates. She gives a quick explanation of a role that he would. And then she tells him what the result is and they go from there and it, it, it focused on the narrative aspect and it was, it clicked, you know, there's that instinctive, oh, oh, I know how to do this. I know how to pretend. And I think that, um, that really goes to that point of it's, it's carrying us back to when we were kids. It's carrying us back to when we were imagined. Um, and being able to translate that and, and, and it's part of why tabletop games of of all kinds can be used as therapy tools they can be used as accessibility tools they can themselves be tools in all of these scenarios because they allow you to express beyond yourself 
Um, that I just, I just <laughs> like what is so poignant. Like um, the the little part where you said, "I know how to do this. I know how to pretend." Like that. Literally, I'm a very emotional person, babies. Everybody here, uh, I I got goosebumps immediately because yes, like being an adult so often is just necessarily and intrinsically forgetting how to play and have joy um that's the thing that i love the most about this space is that it really tells you hey it's okay to still just do silly things for fun and yeah maybe if someone saw you doing it they might say that it's cringe or whatever cringe is freedom i love the messaging of that <laughs> thing of like I will not be embarrassed of the things that I do because that means I get to do everything I want. Mm. People who are mm -hmm. embarrassed of what people might think, think about how many things you're choosing not to do every day of your life. Mm -hmm. Who will die having done more fun stuff? It's me. Like, like <laughs> <laughs> every day. <laughs> oh, that's all so of them. Yeah, uh, it, more stuff of what we love about Daggerheart. These are both great. We have collaborative nature of it. We have the getting back to the roots of like um, making it accessible to story tell together and to pretend other people, anything. Yeah, so the way that like Deborah Ann described that d, &D like start to, to John, that's how I learned. The first time I ever played, somebody was just like, here, just make a character and like didn't explain anything to me. It was like, J here's the rules, just pick one. And then he described, he didn't explain anything. He just described us being in a carriage and then it upended and was like, go, what do you want to do? And we were like, what? And none of us had played at the table. Nobody had played. So nobody had even a starting off point. But it was so beautiful because he didn't say like, well, you could do this or you can do this or maybe just roll. He just said, what do you want to do? And one person took the lead and then we all just kind of followed. And that's what I love about Darrington and, and sorry, Daggerheart as a system is it just allows the player to do things the way that they would want and it's so rules light and even the rules that are there you don't really have to follow as the gm you can kind of make table rules and i really like that and even in the world building like if you play in a campaign they have a blank map and it says okay anna you're from this city where is it on the map Rachel, you're from this city. You tell me what's on the map. Hey guys, tell me what this world is called. And then as the story develops, even as a GM, it takes some of the work off of you because if you don't know what your player is or who your player is or what their backstory might be, as the story develops because you're building it together, you're building the setting together, I think it inspires the player to come up with their own backstory and be like, ooh, GM, like we're going to this town and remember how I told you that there was a mage that I had been fighting with. Maybe they're here, and, you know, and it, I think it'll build that. I mean, we'll see once, you know, the full game is out, but I think it would encourage players to do more of that kind of stuff, which I really like. Uh, what I don't love as much is the, I love not having initiative. I think the action tracker is a little much for GMs to keep track of. So what I started doing at Gen Con was just not doing the action tracker. And I had talked to Spencer about this and it's something that they were testing a little bit. Just activating baddies using fear. And you don't even have to worry about action trackers. You as a GM still have to kind of keep track of who's doing what to make it equal play. Uh, but I think that will improve the system is just taking that out completely. I think, I think Daniel, yeah. some people did that. Some people were running that as an mm. option. Who ran that show of hands of anybody? I was not, but should, okay. Okay. Okay, great. Yeah, it, it, uh, towards the very beginning, I think it was like the, the second session or something. Um, Spencer had actually come up, Spencer and Rowan both had come up to the table and uh, talked to me and, and uh, Kristen, um, who's one of our other uh, Dagger Heart GMs. Um, and um they they asked you know hey can you test this like just just this once you know can you can you give it a shot um and we we did it and uh i kind of collected you know just a little bit of feedback from the players at the end of the table and there was there was kind of a mixed bag of reaction but then i you know i i that this is how i had done it at gen con in 2023 and so i was like you know what? hey can i can i stick with this and he's like yeah run with it you know keep running the rest of the con if you want and that's how I did it every time. And while there was a mixed bag of reaction from a lot of people, I still think that overwhelmingly a lot of others prefer that. Because while the people who are a little bit more reserved, maybe they don't chime in as much, 
that doesn't mean that they're not participating. It just means that they're listening, they're thinking, they're, you know, oftentimes they're just waiting for that moment. And they may need a little bit of encouragement. But people do seem to enjoy that more than not, uh, as far as as far as whether or not you have the action tracker in play. Well, and I love that this system really, there's so much feedback of take pick and choose, which in fairness, mm -hmm. Dungeons and Dragons does as well. That is one of the key mm -hmm. tenets of tabletop RPG is the system should work for you. Choose the rulings that you like, you know. Um, Tom and Chris, we haven't really heard from you guys. Do you have a, a, any thoughts about like the initiative system versus the action tracker versus just fear and hope dynamics? Either one? I have a pretty strong preference for the fear and hope dynamic. Um, there's nothing worse than as a player in, for example, D&D &D or Pathfinder or any other initiative-based system, you're playing a simple class, I roll two hits, and now I might as well go and make my dinner because it could be 45 minutes until I do anything. There's nothing worse. <laughs> but, you know, with something like Daggerheart, uh, particularly, uh, I, I do not run, I prefer not to use the action tracker uh, because I just think it just gums everything up. But that's a personal opinion um it just lets that little bit of narrative freedom happen so if you have got a rogue that's waiting for something to happen for a little while that's fine because it's his choice and he can sit there and do his thing <laughs> or she can or they can and you know whereas the fighter that is on the front line who is getting the living crap beat out of them can respond when they want to and when it makes sense um, and that from a storytelling point of view i think it adds so much I agree with a lot of what everyone else is saying about the hope and the fear mechanics and using fear to activate uh, the hostiles or the enemies. Um, I look at the action tracker more as a way of, uh, like Anastasia said, gauging equal play, making sure everyone has a way to participate. But that being said, as someone who has been DMing for over 10 years and as someone who is pretty big on the GM side of things, uh, keeping track of that in my head is easier for me personally. Uh, so I kind of took the action tracker. I put it out, but I kind of didn't really pay attention to it as much because I was just gauging everything in my head and being like, all right, cool. Everyone's had some things. It's time to move on to this next thing. Uh, I have enough fear built up to do X, Y, Z things. So I didn't really mind that. Uh, in terms of the things I really like about the system, I love how it's narrated forward, uh, like everyone is saying. And also how much latitude it gives the DM to kind of like take things in different directions based on what players say and incorporate their lore and backstories. Just because you as a DM aren't responsible for creating the whole world, everyone is kind of pitching in on that. So it's not like I'm mm -hmm. writing, you know, 200 pages of the backstory of Lord of the Rings by myself. It's everyone's kind of jumping in on that. The one thing I would say on that is that myself and Dan, I remember one of the sessions, one of the last ones last year at Gen Con, it was me, you, and Tasker were all running in the same room. And uh, you were narrating a story that was all around like a cult and like a crypt or something like that. Mine was an allegory of Florida, like with Ricky <laughs> the Rat's theme park. So like you can tell stories all throughout that spectrum. And like, I think someone else was running sci-fi at the time. It was incredible. And that's one of the other things, just that latitude of freedom of, you know, settings and stuff like that um, can add so much. Yeah. My, uh, my comment on the action tracker is that, so one of the things that I liked about it, at least in this, um, at the convention, was that with six players, it was sometimes a little hard when everybody wanted to do something immediately. I had them kind of like put out the token, kind of like a bid sort of thing. And I'm like, okay, I see you put that out. Um, so I could try to keep track of that and I, I'm a very forgetful person. So I like that visual, like kind of cue. Um, but I'd end up typically building a lot up, but I also used that to kind of drum in that kind of intensity feeling in the players. So they're like, cause I kept it going throughout from the very beginning to the very end. So I'd be hoarding it kind of for the very end. So the players are like, um, um why does she have that much why does she have that much and i know like my very last table i had like a whole bunch i was planning on a whole like big old scene and then they managed to talk them down and i'm like darn it yeah and they're yeah. like well i could change them. i'm like no that was absolutely fantastic like i love it just darn it no, I, I would I would agree with what you're saying is that for me, and, and again, I think this is such a good conversation to happen because there's two sides of every coin. 
for me personally, my players, they, um, we, there is a lot of debate at my table because we play Daggerheart weekly here on this channel and everything. And some of them are like, I miss the initiative system. I agree with Chris, hate it. People are getting up, they're going to make tacos. They don't remember anything that's happened and they come back and they cast a fireball. Everybody's in different locations. I love the looseness of it. I actually, though, I, January, I, I, Jan, I think what you're saying and that I really like is that um, I use all of those little, Kristen, again, she called them manipulatives because she is a, a teacher. Uh, and so manipulatives at the table, I like those because I like showing everybody. I kind of like the theatrics of, wow, guys, look at all this fear that I have. Wow. Or the like, you know, I I've done this thing at table where I've told people and I've been like, okay guys, so here's the thing. I can only have a maximum of six fear and I have six. So if we're talking about the world and how much fear has been generated in the world, what do you think that means for what's about to happen? Similarly with action tokens, I like that thing of you get to see, especially if they're different tokens per player, you get to see who is really shouldering the brunt. And maybe that guides me when I'm attacking of, of course I'm attacking you. You're the one punishing the hostiles. So mm -hmm. I like a lot of that for the dynamics of it. But I will say that I think at the highest, uh, you know that meme where it's like tabletop RPG and it's a person doing yoga. And then it's like uh, a person doing tabletop RPG collaboratively. And it's like they have the, the yeah. eye opening. And then at the, the, maximum, yeah, 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 yeah. the maximum version of tabletop is probably just no rules. And everybody is just there freestyling, improving. You could put them on a stage like Madison Square Garden, you know, and they can just do it. Um, but for me, I think that I like what Daggerheart has done because I consider a lot of these things to be building blocks. The action tracker to me is a training tool of saying, you're used yeah. to an initiative system. We don't have that. How will you know it's fair? We're going to put this out. And then whenever you go, you put a token on it of your color. And then we know that you're each taking turns, you know? Um, right. I, I, it's, I, like the it's like the training wheels. A hundred percent it is. It's like, you know, everybody take your turns. Everybody be cautious. If you don't play nice, I give you each just one token. And after you've all gone, then we give them back out, you know, like... So yeah. I like some of those training tools that are in there, but I agree with you guys. I think at the best versions of play, you get to put this down, you know? So yeah. That's the I, thing. I, oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, you're, you're fine. Um, I was just going to say, I, I think that it, it, if you can instill a, a degree of trust with your players, and that was a big thing for me. That was something that I really emphasized with my players at Gen Con this year was like, if you guys can have trust in me as, as your GM, as someone who is running your game, that I'm going to give you a good story. I'm going to do my damnedest to do that. If you can trust in that, then I will trust that you guys will all play fairly. You guys will all work together and spotlight each other, spotlight yourselves, um, and share the storyline together. And then what I did was I didn't even show them the fear. I pulled the dish that had the fear tokens behind the GM screen. And I, I made a point of to create that tension to make sure that they knew that something was going on, but they, unless they were really tabulating things, they weren't necessarily, they didn't know how much I would make. It was really loud every time I dropped a fear token in, or every time that I used one to make something happen, um, you know, made it loud, made it obvious. Uh, and, and it, 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 it got cracked, you know, people cracked smiles and, and people realized, oh, okay, I see how this is going to go from here. Um, and I think, yeah, if you can instill that level of trust with your players, then, then things flow a lot easier. Yeah. Ultimately tabletop is a trust fall exercise. I put this into the chat. I like to lead a lot of my tables in the same way of saying, Hey guys, 
This is a trust fall, okay? I'm about to be pretty embarrassing up here. I'm gonna do a lot of silly voices and I'm gonna be up yes. here and I'm gonna be loud and fun, hopefully, you know? And and I might not do my best. I might do amazing. We might laugh. We, I could cry. I cry a lot at tables, guys. Um, <laughs> you guys are here at this table because we have all agreed to trust in each other. So let's nobody think of this as adversarial we're all here to make hopefully a thing that we can think about later and be like that was fun i had a good day that day you know um which is all life really is is the little smattering of good days that you get um so and this brings me you know always ever the bouncing to the next topic this brings me to the next part that I wanna talk about. And I do want each person, imagine that each one of you in this has a little token here because I want to hear from everybody on this about what your favorite, if you have a favorite moment from especially Gen Con in the room or playing Daggerheart or experiencing something with Darrington Press, something that ties us into the theme here, a favorite moment. Can can we share that, you know, just to relive camp a little? Such a good one. I was literally sitting at the table like this, looking at my players when it happened. So uh, for those who haven't played Daggerheart, when you do character creation, there are connections that you create with your characters. And it's basically three questions that ask you, uh, who in this group do you not trust? Or who are you hiding something from? Or just... There's, there's a number of questions and each character has different questions to try and create that party, especially because when you're at a convention, you're playing with six people you might not know or you might know half of them, whatever. So they all created these wonderful connections. And then I had one table, I think it was my second to last table, that went all in on the RP and included the connections. And one of them being a betrayal. And this was the only time that I had a player choose the not morally safe option. So in this module, I don't want to spoil too much for people that haven't played Marauders, but you kind of get to a moral quandary of like, do you stick with the people that hired you or do you stick with probably what's more morally correct? And I had one player that was like, no, I'm sticking with the people that uh, hired me and they RP'd the discussion and they took this betrayal moment of like, this is why I left you at the altar and the whole table was like, <gasps> and then they played out this whole like relationship at the table. And like, I have never been like, I'm gonna cry now thinking about it. I have never been so proud of players. And that's what I love just going back to this system is it so encourages that, but it also encourages it at different levels. If you don't wanna do that, you don't have to, but it allows for people that want to do that kind of play to do it. And it just, it was so pleasing as a GM to be the one. And I think that's why I love GMing, facilitating that for people. Yeah, so, so good. Yeah, that is what keeps me GMing is that I think in my head of what what could I maybe, I, I always say that a GM is, you probably have some acts of service love giving in your chest because like I like to give my friends things. Also, um, for those of you in chat, we have Darcy in chat from, from Darrington Press. Hi Darcy, it's so good to see you again. And if you have anything that you had a favorite moment and you wanna put it in chat so that we could, you could participate in this camp moment with us, please do. It's so good to see you. Everybody say hi. Hi, Darcy. Hi, Darcy. Hi, Darcy. Some of us Hi, are Darcy. Mute, you know? <laughs> <laughs> the, other, the other thing I was going to add uh, to that, and this is just like another Daraton Press plug because like I can't talk enough about their uh, products. If you want practice as players on how to do that kind of RP and you don't necessarily want to do it in a game, for the queen, but also till the last gasp. My partner play it at the beach, drinking, shit happens. I was pregnant with his brothers, whatever, like, you know what I mean? But it like, because it's a combat game that doesn't focus on the combat and you just have prompts to tell the story, it teaches you how to do that. So yeah, if anybody wants to pick it up, please go. It is like the best improv game I've ever played till the last gasp, that's, that's my last plug. I played that with my best friend and that is like the only game that's gotten me to actually cry at one point in time because we were playing like twins like on separate sides of a family like sort of thing and it, it was just a lot. Um, it's, but it's probably YouTube. going back. 
you're absolutely killing me because I so I I was supposed to play with Kristen last year uh, at Gen Con 2023. I was supposed to play till the last gasp and I didn't get a chance to. I was just too busy because I was working a double shift. I was working for Darrington mm-hmm. and Index. Um, and so she she had a copy and I was like, you know what? I'm I, you know, I ended up getting a copy as well. And I said, you know what? I'm not going to play this until I have a chance to sit down with her and play it. Oh. We were supposed to play again this year and we still couldn't make it happen. So I have a copy on the shelf and I have never gotten to play. Girl, it play, online. play online, play online. I'm going to have to. <laughs> yeah, it's online. And listen, just so we know, I always my pitch is we're the fate divinities. We talk about Daggerheart and sometimes other things, you know, because like I because Darrington Press, you know, some Something that they are doing, we're all just going to plug for them at this point because we love them. But they are trying. I always want companies to make the thing more accessible, right? Tabletop RPG has a very high floor. You have to understand rules. You have to have some dice and be comfortable going and buying dice. Get someone to GM. It's not the easiest of hobbies to get into. So every little thing that you can do that makes that process easier grows our community. Games like For the Last Gasps, games like For the Queen, these are things that are helping to influence that. Oh, Alex Hill's here too. Hi, Alex. So good to see you. Everybody say hi, Alex. (laughs) Hi, Alex. Hi, Alex. 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 (laughs) So good to see you guys. We miss you so much. Let's go back to camp now. Um, Uh, Seriously. (laughs) uh, It's fun. That's what this is. I have it unpacked. I'll just go. Yes, we're ready. We're ready. (laughs) Okay, um, so we have, uh, I I know we had Anna's, um, but other favorite moments, guys. Favorite moments in the room or Daggerheart, Darrington, anything like that. Jump in. I suppose my favorite my favorite moment of Daggerheart was again it was just letting the players go a bit mad with it, and it was for me it was the start of a campaign and it was literally just the introductory scene because the whole stick of this mini campaign was that the players were part of a Duke's retinue until a dinner went wrong, and all the setup I gave them was how did the dinner go wrong, and they just ran with it. So there was a bard that was a clank, so a uh, robot almost, um, who ended up punching one of the guests because he didn't like his songs. The, um, the druid uh, was the gardener who accidentally gave the cook the wrong mushrooms. Um, the, um, the, and the, the last one was a ranger, if I remember correctly, uh, who had, a, mush- who had a, no, a mushroom, who had a ferret that was kind of running up people's trousers and uh, like, you know, ended up getting caught sleeping with the head of the guard's wife. And that all played out in a single scene, and it was just incredible. I was in stitches. Um, it was absolutely amazing. Um, yeah, absolutely fantastic moment. So good. <laughs> I love the creativity that was happening in those rooms. I see. I see, Jan. That you're. You are you? Do you have one? Let's go. Let's go, baby. Okay. Okay. So, so in the same session. So to begin. Okay. So there is, you know, the whole fight at the very beginning um, for some things, and at one of the sessions. Um, the, there was the, what, <laughs> trying to find my words again. Okay. So one, one of the characters had a crush on another character. Okay. And they were both like the, like kind of, uh, up close fighters. Um, so one person like would swing and then wink across the, uh, creature at the person. And then that person ended up like failing their next role. So I'm like, okay, describe it. And they're like, well, I'm so distracted because they winked at me and I'm panicking. And I'm like, I'm here for it. Um, but following that, like later on, it's a whole separate scene, but that was just one of the scenes that I had a favorite thing of, um, going back to that whole like decision of whether to stay with the people who hired you or leave with the other people. Um, the party split up in my last, um, on my last table and the, (laughs) the, the bard goes to set fire to the uh, other side sales. Okay. and And that's before they find out about the stuff of why it's happening so then i go and describe what's happening on the other ship because i'm like oh you set fire wonderful so i describe what's happening and i put in a lot of detail and they're like oh no are we the bad guys and then they're like uh (laughs) and then after you know it starts ramping up ramping up ramping up and then i turn back to the person who's setting fire to the other seals i'm like how do you want to set fire to and they're like oh no 
I don't know what's going on. I can't stop now. So <laughs> there's this moment where they're like trying to <laughs> figure out how to get out of there because both of things are going down and they're like, what did we do? <laughs> Oh my god, I love that so much. It's so man, I I I think was I in the room when you were doing that table? Was that the one where your table got like there were like several like it was like watch watch and it like you your table. I don't know, possibly it was the very last day. I believe it was Sunday morning. Was there, Sunday morning, babe. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, Saturday night I was out and Sunday morning I was back there, tired. Voice almost gone. Still not completely back. That was beautiful. Okay, guys, we have I Tom, we haven't heard from you, Daniel, you. Yeah, so um one of my favorite moments was uh, again with everyone back in that uh on like the lower decks right in front of when that happened. Uh, my party actually ended up siding with uh, the people that had hired them, uh, which was actually really interesting because that's not written into the module at all. So I was scrambling to be like, okay, cool. You managed to convince the captain that you're on his side and all everything going there uh, because they had played it off as uh, everything that was going on was a natural consequence of war. And since they're at war and under, you know, military rule at the moment, it was acceptable under those circumstances as kind of like a war time situation, but they were going to be having strong words with uh, whoever was in charge once they had reached uh, the final base. Um, but on, on a couple of the other moments I really enjoyed was really how how close Starrington holds Staggerheart uh, with, you know, Spencer and Rowan and the other, and Alex and other representatives like wandering around and like interacting with all of us, taking in feedback and like taking that into consideration and how close they hold it to really make it the best game it can really be and getting to meet some of the creators and everything was, is always a wonderful experience because uh, I know for us who are running things last year, we ran into them a lot and this year also. Um, so just how willing they are to, you know, interact with the community and take on all the feedback and all the things that uh, we're saying through these playtests and and action them yeah a hundred percent i like i i think that when when i get to my little piece that's going to be something that i talk about but that like engagement that you're you can just tell that this is I don't want to call Daggerheart their baby because they have a lot of babies. It would be like picking their favorite child, right? But And they, they put so much care into everything they create. Uh, when we played for the queen on the channel, I like showed every element of it because I'm just like, it's just so pretty, you know? Like you open it inside and like there's text in the, the sorry, the, the credits are there in the middle. It's a magnetized box. They are not... They are not a group that throws spaghetti at the wall to see what sticks. They make quality stuff. And Daggerheart is not different from that. So yeah, love that. Yeah, yeah. They they move with intention. Yeah. Hundred oh, percent. Yeah. And it's and it's in the ethos of every game they have. It's it's incredible. Um for me, I have I have you know, been doing this a little bit longer. And so I have I have a couple amazing things. Two of them were in game, one of them was out of game actually. Um, so this year we had this, we had this, uh, we had an airship adventure, uh, for those of you who, who may not know, uh, it, we were running the Marauders of Windfall, um, which was just so much fun airships. I love airships. They're, they're so much fun. Um, but, uh, they are sitting down to dinner, uh, with the commander of the ship. And, uh, there was a bard named Tegan, uh, who was one of the pre-generated characters, and the player playing Tegan had decided that they were just they had they had had it with this commander and they just started taunting him and taunting him and just firing him up to the point where eventually he he stands up, tosses his chair backwards and he says, leave, you are not welcome here. And then Tegan continues to push to the point where he draws his pistol and is, is standing at the table, staring down his pistol at Tegan. Leave. I know you can fly. You have wings. Get out. And so Tegan leaves. And, and the way that I had my ship set up was a little bit larger than most. So uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> leaves the... <laughs> stop it. Um, leaves the, the dining hall and uh, goes like further down the ship, down a hallway, closes a door behind him. 
And then uh, <laughs> they transform. They used a like disguise uh, ability that they had. And they turned around and came back in the room. They, they like threw open the door and uh, they, they were looking like one of the soldiers uh, on the ship and said, Captain, I heard a ruckus. And before uh, before they could finish the sentence, the captain fired. And so he had just he had snapped. He had hit his limit. And so there was just this moment of everyone at the table is frozen because one of the players just got shot at a military dinner. So <laughs> and then it, it was that quite so a fall good. from there. <laughs> that is so good. Yeah. Um, and just there it was it, that moment of tension was incredible. Um, thankfully, Tegan had had uh, uh, rolled really or uh, had, had um, she had a bunch of armor and stuff. Um, Ooh. and so they were able to, with the armor slots, defer almost all of the damage. But of course, you know, it still hit them, yeah. Uh, right. and, and it definitely underscored how dangerous the commander was, yeah. Uh, so that was that was amazing. Last year, there was a uh, you know, of course, we have this chaos of world building and and custom characters, and and you know, there's there was just a whole lot to contend with all at once. Mm -hmm. But um, the party was tasked; they had been they had a put a task put to them by the council of the city that um, they had to select among themselves who was worthy enough to be offered as a blood sacrifice at the grave of the gods. And they, one of them, volunteered and. Um, they had to go through this process where they were purified and anointed and they ended up going to uh this this uh you know this temple and uh they decided that they thought that the the priest was a charlatan um and so they challenged the priest and two of them ended up going through the purification ritual because the first one was like yeah this is this is a bunch of nonsense so they get Finally, you know, they, they leave on horrible terms with this priest. They get to um, the grave of the gods, which was this massive island or like a, an island in the middle of a lake underneath a floating city. Uh, they had just done amazing with the world building. They get there, they step onto this plate carved into the ground and the gods themselves speak down on them and they had to fight mirror images of themselves without any assistance. Oh, incredible. Oh, what a mechanic to put into your, everybody, put that into your tabletop games at home. You have to <laughs> fight, you know it's a video game trope, put it in there. We want to fight our Absolutely, yeah. yeah. This was just and, to clarify. All of this yeah. that you're saying was at Gen Con 2023 in the yeah. game that you ran. What a way to showcase that system. Jeez. <laughs> okay, okay, keep going. And so they, 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 finished, they finished it off. They managed, you know, of course, they, they managed to finish themselves. All of the uh, the rest of the party charges in and, and they they help them knock it out. And so what ends up happening was they, uh, you know, they had proven themselves. And instead of choosing the next successor in the lineage... Um, they actually split and they had dual monarchs, not married, not joined by marriage, two blood monarchs and whole new lines that jointly ruled the city. Um, and it was just it was such a satisfying end uh, to to the storyline. Uh, it was really cool. I but like that. Also I think when, oh, go ahead. You no, know, I like that also when so something that I try to tell people is that your story doesn't have to be small just because you're level ones or you're level twos. Make mm -hmm. a big story. It's super fun if you want to do the goblin encampment. That is so fun, so good, absolutely. Mm -hmm. But, you know, my players know that on, and again, you can watch it on the YouTube, they were at level two fighting a emerging god, like a nascent god and everything. But because I believe in tell big stories. Every day of my life, I do paperwork, you know? So yeah. I love hearing that it you even, did that last year. Go ahead, Jan. Yeah. It even goes through that in the manuscript of Daggerheart. Because going back to how it, you know, has a lot of information about how to run it. It even says, even at level one, you're still an experienced adventurer you still have done stuff and i think that's one of the things that i that that kind of stuck with me when i like try to guide people like okay kind of make connections and they're like well i don't know i don't sort of thing and i'm like remember you guys have lives that happened before this yeah 
Uh, yeah. Anastasia actually made a really great point in chat that I would like to talk about really briefly. Daggerheart is a good system at level one. You feel like you can actually do something to support the big story. I agree so much with that. And I actually have a theory that a lot of that is that they unlinked um, limited resource pools for utilizing your abilities in Daggerheart. So for those of you who aren't familiar in like Dungeons and Dragons, if you're a, a caster, for example, people feel this all the time. Melee classes, you can punch and punch and punch. You never run out of punches. But as a sorceress, you can can trip for free always, but you run out of your good spells because you have limited usages. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. If that is magical power inside of my chest, I don't think that I run out of, of everything. Maybe my big one. I can't summon lightning all the time but i sure. should i could do a little a little gust of wind come on but um uh dagger heart they uncouple a lot of that and say if you can restore the currency which you can through you know taking stamina potions to clear stress and things like that then listen rogue you could do as much as you want so <laughs> super cool Sorry, Daniel. I, I, think I, it, I think you were wrapping up and everything go ahead yeah yeah i was well and actually one of the things i was going to say links really well into that um one of my favorite lines in the initial r very rough outline that we got uh from from darrington last year uh and and has carried through i i was actually looking for it a minute ago in the the current manuscript but i i can't seem to find it at the moment but i know it's there um was just the line hold on gently um hold on to the fiction gently let the story that you want to tell the hero the heroism of your character let that be forefront and let the mechanics and all of the, the drivel fall away in the back. Um, and I think that's, that's core to what makes this such a good narrative system is just that the focus is there. The rules ultimately do not matter one bit um, because the focus is, is there with the player and their characters and the journey that they're on. One of the coolest thing probably the coolest thing that has happened with me with Daggerheart at all it didn't even happen to me directly i was leaving a session uh or no i wasn't leaving i was going out for a bio break uh, in between one of these these sessions in in gen con 2023 and i walk out into the hallway and and spencer and rowan had been in and out of the room a little bit just kind of listening they were trying to gauge how things were going they were having us tweak stuff on the fly it was it was a very interesting and intense situation but i walk into the hallway and i see spencer cross-legged on the floor in the hallway surrounded by a crowd of people and i'm i'm like okay what what could he possibly be doing and i get a little bit closer and i realize that he is walking them through character creation he has such a heart for this game that he and the rest of the team have designed. He believes in it so much that he will sit there in what little free time that he has at a convention and just teach it and just share it and, and share a love. It was incredible. And I tell that story way too much no, because, <laughs> because it just, yeah, that's, you know, again, call to action, people, if you love tabletop RPG and, and so many people, the reason that they, again, high floor of tabletop RPG, one of the reasons they feel they can't get into it is they're like, well, it's been there for 30 years and everybody already knows how to do it. And they have these multi-class builds that are way stronger than what I'm going to be able to figure out. I'm just, I'll figure out something else to do. Guys, if you want a system that you get to grow with, get into Daggerheart now because it is the Wild West and we're all back to that place of just playing together. Nobody knows the best strats. We're just trying to tell stories together and we're all growing together in this. So when you see people like Spencer Stark, one of the creators of this system, they're excited to showcase character creation it's because you can't just go on YouTube and find literally hundreds of videos on how to create a character. We're all united on this front right now, guys. It's a wonderful place to be. 
We only have a few minutes left, so I really want to kind of tie out, but I am going to give myself the same space. You know, I, I love myself as much as I love my friends, and, you know, self-care is important. Um, my favorite thing, and I'm going to go super cheesy with this, I said on a different thing that my favorite thing was being there at the newness of this thing, which I am very excited about, but I think here today and leading up to this my favorite thing which is you're allowed to change and evolve every day of your life daggerheart provides for that by the way guys as a system super cool you can change your experiences at higher levels to win it. anyway uh, anyway my favorite thing from gen con was the com the sense of community that daggerheart already has i think that Every tabletop player has that to a certain extent because we live in this very esoteric space, right? But Daggerheart has, again, this beautiful thing, which is a built-in community. Because, again, this is not coming from nowhere. The Cosmere has this with Brandon Sanderson, right? What we have in Daggerheart is not only a great system, but a community because it's coming from the publishing house, Darrington Press, associated with critical role so everybody there are so many critters who have never played dungeons and dragons but i think that they could really get into this and as we were there at the con each day the number of people i saw there hoping they could get a table and us trying to figure out how we could get more people in and again the darrington press group we had alex and darcy and spencer and rowan uh ivan stopped by everybody being there and being excited for this new thing it really to me i've said it a lot felt like when i was a kid i was a camp kid i loved camp you get went and made friends it was super fun it felt like that experience of camp where you're all excited about this one thing together and that's my favorite thing right now about Daggerheart is seeing so many people all excited about this one thing together. So, um, okay. So that's my favorite thing. Last thing here. And this is, okay, guys, this is not spiel time because we are five minutes. Okay. So we're in lightning round. Okay. Real quick before we close out. One hope or fear for the system as we are turning a chapter. Open beta is closed. We're launching in 2025. A hope or a fear for the system leading off to showcase how this is going. My hope is that we see some really big marketing around this. I want to see huge marketing to draw as many people for launch day as possible. Um, I'm hearing some things about certain conventions with a Felicia Day maybe. Maybe. Um, so hmm. anyway, that's my hope. Go, anybody. Uh, my hope? seriously. Oh, oh. go, 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 no, go. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> my hope would be that this system helps rules heavy players get out of their heads for that and pretend like we haven't played Dungeons and Dragons and just go back to storytelling and just stop looking at the rules. That's my hope. Incredible. Uh, job. My big hope for it, my big hope for it is to see big conventions you know those those epics with 10 12 tables trying to go for the same thing that's those are the stories i want to tell those are the stories i want to be involved in give me it so good yes more more i, I seriously hope that this becomes uh, like the on the on ramp for players joining uh you know tabletop games i, I think this is a fantastic place to start uh, i also personally this is me being greedy I hope that we start seeing a lot of really cool like world building from the mines at Darrington Press because they make some cool stuff. God, that manuscript, you guys. Read the manuscript. Oh my God, so good. Okay, I won't, I, no asides. Lightning round. Who, come on. All right. Come on. Yeah. A fear that I have, a fear I have would be um, that it will be expensive when, when it physically comes out because I'm just poor and I'm, I'm like, I must have it. Um, but my hope is definitely that it goes super far because it is absolutely phenomenal and I'm excited to see where it is and I'm excited to be kind of a part of it and be able to see where it goes. Uh, my hope for all of this is right now it feels very neat, but I would hope that in the future, especially upon release, 
that we have a wealth of online content, a wealth of online tools to help people get into it. Uh, character building, as we know, is going to be modular with the cards. So having some kind of online version where you can print the character uh, sheets as is, just so that you don't have to, you know, fiddle with photocopiers or whatever would be a really cool thing to have looking forward. That is incredible. These are all, wow, well done guys for a lightning round. So good, so succinct. I do wanna take a moment because Nightbot is crazy right now um, and is deleting my friend's really good notes. Uh, Daniel said in the chat, we should run an epic and guys, I'm in. Let's do it. We could have our own little convention. You know, Gary Gygax started Gen Con at Lake Geneva in like 1968 for 20 people. I think it was 60 people at a dollar. Guys, next one. This is starting Daggerheart. Doesn't have to be like Geneva. I don't know. <laughs> like, but, like, so, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Daggerheart Con 2025. <gasps> Everybody hands in. Yeah, <laughs> so good. That's it, guys. We are right before the end. It was a full hour and a half. I want to really, really thank my guests for being here. Um, I'm going to, again, put the uh, guests command in chat. For anybody who's here, if you want to put your information in chat again for anybody to follow, please do. Everybody who's watching, go follow these people if they have stuff available or come join our Discord or the Darrington Press Discord and talk with us about Daggerheart, you know? I think that I say this a lot um, on the channel is that I think Daggerheart is going to be the next big thing in tabletop RPG. I am all in on this and I know that I'm surrounded by people like you guys that are also all in on this. Um, and maybe we'll have the good fortune of doing it all again next year. Maybe. So, One can hope. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm in if you guys are. So you hear that, guys, at Daring to Press that are in chat right now? <laughs> Did just bring us back. We're here. No, okay. All right. I love you guys so much. I'll miss you, okay? All right. Miss Bye. you. Thank you so much for bringing us together. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> no problem. Before it comes to worse, I'll see everyone at Gen Con next year. Daggerheart. Yeah. Next year. <laughs> <laughs> right, bye, everybody. Bye. 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 bye.